Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting Haunted House and I'm sipping on some apple tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along, you could certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, purple violet, cobalt blue, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, chrome yellow, fire red, and Mars black. And of course you can switch up those colors if you like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'm gonna be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. And then I have a number eight and a number two round synthetic brushes. And I might call these small, medium, and large, or I'll just call them out by their given names <laughs> during the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me, you're probably gonna wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I do provide you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of the canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. You can also purchase from my shop things individually like the brushes from my brush line. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the first step is painting a base coat onto the canvas. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush to paint, but I'm gonna use my small round to demonstrate how to pre-mix a custom color. The colors I'm gonna be using for this step are black, brown, blue, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a dark blue color, which is gonna be a very neutral kind of blue. So I have already pre-mixed my color here on my palette, so you can see where I'm headed with it. So how I achieved this is a whole lot of blue and then what I'm gonna do with the blue is I'm gonna add just a little bit of brown into it and a little bit of black and a little bit of white. So what I'm in essence doing is I'm desaturating and neutralizing my blue all at the same time. So I'm creating a very soft, dark blue tone and it's not super dark, um, but compared to like my cobalt blue, I think it's a little bit darker in tonal value. So that's why I'm referring to it as dark blue. And it is definitely steered towards blue and not gray. So we're gonna call it a dark blue. So that's where I'm headed with that. Once I've achieved that color, then what I'm gonna do, put away my mixing tool, take out my large bristle brush, pick up a, quite a bit of that custom blue, and I'm gonna be painting the almost the entire canvas with this color. I am gonna bring in a little bit of lighter tones as I come down towards the bottom half of the canvas, but this is just going to be the base coat. So we're gonna be adding clouds and dimensional elements on top of this in a future step. So we're just using this as a jumping off point for our entire composition. So once I reach about the halfway point coming down my canvas, I'm going to start introducing a little bit of white with this color. And I'm just using kind of a long crisscross type of motion to get it on here. Now I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white with my custom dark blue, and it's gonna get a little bit lighter as I come down in, in through this region. Same thing, just pick up a little bit of white with my custom dark blue. 
and I'm getting it to blend, but it doesn't have to be a perfect blend simply because, again, we're gonna be doing a whole lot of other stuff on top of this. I'm picking up some more white on my brush right now to bring this down just a little bit further, maybe about uh, to the three quarter way mark of my canvas. And now I can go back to picking up my custom blue. So I didn't even wash my brush. I just picked up that custom blue and get this to blend in just a little bit along this line. Doesn't even have to go straight across because we're doing a landscape. So <laughs> there's no straight lines are needed in this. And even no straight lines are gonna be needed on our house either because it's a spooky haunted house. So <laughs> there's, we don't need anything that has precision in this painting. And then once I've got this on here, what I'm gonna do before I call this step done is I'm gonna take my brush and I'm just gonna loosely go across left to right just kind of allowing myself to work out any really thick spots of paint that might have um, happened and or maybe catching any spots that I might have missed. Like I missed a couple spots over here so I can just kind of hit those. And my paint, because I did this in such a rapid way, my paint is still um, a little bit wet. So that allows me to um, do this soft blending at the end in through here. And then once I've got this done, I am going to be using this same brush brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're going to finish the sky and the distant landscape. So I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. I do recommend that your canvas is dry before you start this step because it'll be an easier process. The colors I'm gonna be using are white, dark blue, black, purple, cobalt blue, and maybe a little bit of yellow. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to have my sky really dark at the top, which is where I'm gonna be using a little bit of black and a good amount of purple. And then, then I'm gonna be transitioning down into the lighter tones. I want it to just look, mysterious and enchanted and spooky and you know foggy so I'm going to be using a lot of kind of a circular brush stroke. I'll be transitioning from black to purple to cobalt blue to white but all the while I'll also be using my dark blue to help make those colors look nice and soft and blend. When I get down to here my moon is going to be this big area over here so I don't have to totally concentrate on here but I definitely want to make sure where the moon is gonna overlap that it looks nice and natural, as far as spooky house painting natural goes. <laughs> but when I get down to here, my distant landscape is gonna start somewhere in through here. So I'm gonna get that sky to have more, I'm, this is where I might end up using a little bit of the uh, yellow in my sky to get it almost like a greenish type of hue back in through there. So I'm just gonna have fun with that. The sky's gonna end right about in through here. And then I'm gonna have my distant landscape, which is gonna have the same color palette as the sky. And it's gonna be kind of lighter up at the top and the left. And then we'll just get it to go kind of darker down in this bottom right hand corner because this whole area is going to be covered by my front hill, which we'll put on later. So we don't have to really do much to this part here. So I'm going to start up in my sky with a tiny bit of black and purple on my brush at the same time. So I have black and purple. The black will overpower the purple. So I'm just using the purple on my brush at the same time in order to help me transition into the purpley areas that I want it to go. So as I'm doing this, it just, you know, is in my brush. So now when I go to my purple, you'll be able to kind of detect it a little bit better. My blend will happen a little bit more naturally and that'll, that'll work out well in my visual opinion. <laughs> so I'm just picking up purple now. If you're all black as you're applying the paint right now, you may need to wash your brush. But for me, I didn't have much black on my brush, so this allows me to transition nice and easily. So I'm gonna bring my purple down just a little bit further. And again, in my head, I'm thinking these are clouds, I'm just having fun, so I don't need it to look super perfect. I'm leaving little peekaboo spots of my blue back there. Now I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of cobalt blue on my dirty brush. So I can get the cobalt blue to intermingle with all of these other colors. So this is a little bit of my cobalt blue. 
Now once I've got this on here and I've got a good display of these additional kind of pops of color, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start picking up a little bit of my dark blue plus a little touch of white on my brush. So just a little hint of both of them on the brush. And this is where I get to incorporate or kind of mystify <laughs> my, my sky a little bit. So this is my dark blue plus a teeny tiny touch of white. So again, not a lot of white, but this is going to help just kind of intermingle all these colors, really just make it look nice and airy and like there's some good atmospheric dimension in there. And as you're going through this process, if you want there to be more of anything, if you want there to be more evidence of purple, pull in more purple and maybe a touch of white on your brush. So that's gonna give you more of kind of a purpley type of effect to it. So you can really kind of customize these colors in whatever way you want. The only thing that I really was concentrating on trying to do was to um, get it to be a little bit darker around the edges and lighter kind of down in through here. So this one, I just picked up a little bit of my cobalt blue plus white just to kind of accentuate maybe some drifting clouds. Now down at the bottom, of my sky. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my white and my custom blue and just a teeny tiny touch of yellow. And when I say teeny tiny touch, I mean just a dot. So nothing much at all. And you're gonna see how powerful this little one spot of yellow on my brush can be. So I just wanted to give it kind of like a Halloween-y type of um, glow to it. And to me, green speaks Halloween. <laughs> so that's where I'm going with this little addition of this, this um, faint hue of, of green in through here, but that's not necessary. If you're going through yours and you're like, nah, I don't, I don't, I'm not feeling the, the green vibe, then by all means, leave it out. You don't have to do the same color pattern as I'm doing. Whatever is speaking to you is what you should go with. And then once you've got this set, I think I want it just a little bit, transition just a little bit further down into here, right to where I want that landscape to be. And you can see I'm just using a very fun, circular type of brush stroke, nothing super complicated, just allowing for it to just um, kind of all look like we've got some, some fun, spooky colors in here. Let me just get this section to morph just a little bit more. And of course you can bring, I just picked up a little bit of purple. I wanted to bring some purple down here too. So again, feel free to have fun with that as much as you want. So once I've got that done, I'm gonna move right down into my distant landscape. So all I really need to do here is have it dark down in kind of this right hand side and then transition into a little bit brighter or more saturated colors in through here and just give the identity of kind of where it's sitting. So I think I'm actually gonna wash and dry my brush and start like I did the sky. Start with the dark and then work my way to the light. So wash and dry my brush, picking up a teeny tiny bit of black and then a good amount of purple. And again, just to show you, I mean, I just have a teeny, well, maybe I need a tiny bit more than that. <laughs> just a teeny tiny bit of black and my purple. And I'm gonna start over here on this right-hand side and just kind of give myself this pretty dark illusion over here, maybe a little bit more just to give myself just some extra little pops of a landscape. And for me on this landscape, I'm gonna be using more of kind of a um, curved uh, horizontal type of brush stroke to just give me, give, make it look like there's maybe little hills or mounds in there. I'm picking up some of my cobalt blue right now in order to give myself some, um, of the blue in there like it is up in the sky. So something like this, just bringing this down here. And I'm bringing it all the way up to my sky. So I don't wanna have any unpainted areas between my sky and my, um, and my landscape. I just picked up cobalt blue, white, and my dark blue. Just gonna get some over in through here, just the little edge of it in through here. And now I can just start playing with any kind of little highlights that I might want in here. So I'm gonna pick up my um, dark blue plus a little bit of white. And this is where you can just kind of maybe pop in a little bit of mist in between some of these little hills. And again, nothing fancy. This is just intended to kind of be background noise, if you will, to the painting. There's We don't have to really make it too 
invasive, just something that's going to, if you wanted to say that there's a landscape, great. If not, you might not even want to have this landscape um, behind, but I thought it'd be cool for like a dimensional element in the painting. And again, if you wanted to add a touch of the yellow, that's going to make it have kind of like a little bit of a of a greenish type of appearance to it. So you can certainly have fun with that. And then once you've got this done, we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So you can make any little fiddling adjustments that you feel might be necessary. And then you can just wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're going to be painting our moon and the base coat for our foreground land. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. Again, I do recommend that your canvases dry before this, you start the step. The colors I'm gonna use are white, black, my dark blue, um, and I'm not sure what else. Maybe a little bit of yellow, maybe a little bit of brown. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put my moon in place with a thin coat of paint. While that's drying, we're gonna go and paint the base coat for our foreground land, and then we'll come back and do a little bit of dimensional element on our moon. I want my moon to just look, again, painterly. I'm having fun with this. I'm not very concerned about it being super tight around the edges. So I'm actually gonna give it kind of a soft edge around the exterior and I'm going to be using my paintbrush to draw it or to get that circular shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a little bit of white and my dark blue. So I'm going to do kind of a neutral tone on this or a tone that's complementary to the whole painting and then we'll come back and make it lighter. So I'm going to find myself about the halfway point on the left hand side of my canvas. So for me, that's somewhere in here. Then I'm going to go up maybe about two inches and in about an inch. That's gonna give me my first kind of um, marker. And then I'm gonna go straight across and come, I would say maybe about one, two, three, maybe four inches over from the right hand side. So somewhere in this vicinity. Then what you could do is kind of figure out where the center of those is. So for me, that's somewhere around here. And you could use anything like your, measure, your brush as a measuring tool. Say, okay, well, that's about that wide. That's you know somewhere around there that's pretty close to the center. And then you can use that measurement and make yourself a couple of more um, marks away from the center of that, um, of that circle. It doesn't have to be perfect, just something that'll get you in that vicinity. And then you can just take and connect those uh, markers. Again, I'm not going for a perfect circle here. I'm just going for something that's going to tell people that this is the moon behind our behind our fun haunted house or spooky Halloween-esque house on a hill. <laughs> so something like this and just kind of finding my way to those markers. And then again, I'm just going to use my dark blue and white and I'm going to give myself just my base coat to my moon, something like this. You can use a circular brush stroke. You can use whatever kind of brush stroke that you want in order to just kind of get this on here. I am going to make a, a little bit more um, dimensional in a second after it dries for a minute um, and after I get my base coat on my foreground land. But once I've got this on here like this and before I head down to the other one, you can just take your brush and just kind of lightly go over that exterior edge if you have a loop, just a tiny bit of paint on your brush, this will just soften these edges and almost give the, um, the moon a little bit of a glow around it. So that way, if your edges aren't perfect, this little extra kind of um, step here could disguise those edges, make them look a little bit more um, symmetrical, if you will. And that's all I'm gonna do for that first kind of go around. I'm also kind of painting out any really thick spots so that we're, so it'll dry pretty quickly for me. So that looks good. So now I'm gonna go down to my land. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. And I'm just gonna paint my land with black for now, and then I'll uh, later on we'll put some more elements into it. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm picking up some black paint. I'm gonna come up this bottom left-hand corner, I'd say about two, two and a half inches, give myself a little bit of a marker. Then if I find myself the center of my canvas at the bottom, so somewhere about here, 
I'm going to go to the left of that, maybe about two inches, and then I'm going to come up until I'm pretty maybe an inch and a half to two inches away from the bottom of my moon, and then I'm going to just connect in through here. This doesn't have, again, doesn't have to be anything perfect, and then I'm going to go right down to almost to the right-hand corner of the canvas, so maybe a little bit shy of the right-hand corner. And then I'm going to just paint this whole area in with black paint, so nothing fancy here. I will put some little grassy pieces along the edges in a second, but this will just get me started with a, a nice silhouetted hill that my cool house is going to be sitting on. My house is going to be sitting somewhere in this, maybe about in this vicinity, so it's okay whatever happens at the top portion of the hill. It's just giving us somewhere to set the house. And then before um, I go back up to that moon, I'm just going to take this brush and give myself these little kind of pop-up pieces of grass just with the corner of my brush kind of giving myself something that's not a flat line in through here. Again, we'll be doing some extra um, additional stuff to these edges, but this again just starts the process so it's not um, flat, so it has a little bit more information in it. And then once I've got this done, I'm gonna wash my brush and go back up to that moon. So washing my brush. And this time I'm just gonna pick up white to start. And if I wanna add any additional colors after I see what it's looking like with the white, then I can certainly do that. But I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm picking up some white. I want my moon to be kind of the brightest in the middle. You could also have some brightness, like a little bit on the edges, but the brightest in the middle is gonna make it look like it's protruding and it's got a lot of um, dimension to it. So I'm just gonna use my brush in a circular type of fashion. I think I wanna have a little bit of brightness down on this bottom right hand corner of my moon and just kind of gonna work my way out from that center with my dirty brush. So because I'm just allowing myself to um, almost run out of paint as I'm going through this process, it will make it brighter in this central area where I've put the initial paint and then as I work my way out it'll get darker and darker so it's going to naturally give me that dimensional element. If you feel at any time you have too much paint on your brush just give it a good wipe off on your paper towel. That'll help you to control not making this all white all over the place. So if you have a ton of paint on your brush what'll happen is you'll just carry that white everywhere and you'll have a 100% white moon. So I just made sure that I didn't have too much paint on my brush as I'm moving my way out like this. And then if you want to add any additional, you know, little crater areas, you could add more paint, more white paint to your brush. And you could say, okay, well maybe, maybe I'll just kind of leave a little circular dark area over here and that'll make it look like a little crater. If you want to add, um, any additional colors to it. Let's say you want to add a touch of your cobalt blue and maybe a little bit of the yellow and the white to give it um, kind of that greenish type of hue. I just put all three of those colors on my brush, just a very, you can see that yellow, that's going to be too bright. So I'm going to pick more cobalt blue and white up, just wipe my brush off on my paper towel, and this will give me different shades of colors within my moon. So you can certainly play with those um, different aspects of it in order to get it to look different than the surrounding um, the surrounding atmosphere. You can add little craters into it. You can add light spots and dark spots. I just, you know, recommend as you're going through this that you don't make the, the moon too colorful. So if you get to a point where it's really vibrant in the color tones. You can certainly just revert back to the dark blue and white and you can you can tone, oh that was too dark, so just a little bit more white on my brush and then just kind of tone it down a little bit. So you just play with those tones until you find something that is visually appealing to you. If you can get it to go lighter in the middle and kind of a little bit darker around most of those edges, that will give it its dimension. And then once you've got this all set, again, add as much light to it or dark to it as you want. And then once you've got this all set, we will be using 
Let's see, what are we gonna use for the next step? We're gonna use our medium brush for the next step. So you can have fun with your moon, make it as light or as dark as you want, as filled with craters or not as you want. And then you can put this large brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna draw and paint our house. <laughs> so I know I said I was gonna be using my number eight round and then it dawned on me, oh, we gotta draw the house first. So we're gonna, we're gonna draw it with the chalk first and then we're just gonna paint it in with a base coat of black with our number eight um, round. So we're just gonna use black paint in this step. I do again recommend that your canvas is dry and I'm gonna guide you through a series of just fun, super simple, basic crooked shapes. <laughs> and by the time we're done, we'll have something that looks like a, you know, a weathered antique old spooky house that could potentially fall down at any minute. <laughs> so I'm gonna have it sitting on my hill. I'm gonna um, find myself kind of the top of my hill and then I'm gonna come down it just a little bit, maybe somewhere in through here, draw myself a not straight horizontal or vertical line that comes just up into my moon a little bit. And then I'm going to go to the left of that uh, until I'm about maybe two inches away from the edge of the canvas. I'm going to do another vertical line that's a little bit shorter than this one. And then I'm going to connect those two, but I'm going to overhang it a little bit on each side. So I overhang it a little bit here. I'm going to bring it across here and overhang it something like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a rectangular type of a shape right above it. So somewhere in through here. So I'm about maybe an inch above it and I'm maybe an inch in from this line here and maybe one, maybe two and a half inches from this line and through here. Then again, I'm gonna make myself two horizontal lines that are not straight, <laughs> something like that. Maybe even pull it in just a little bit, something like that. Give myself a really fun, uneven rectangle and then cross it over like this and you can overhang it. I'm gonna put take out my pencil so you can maybe see this a little bit better on camera So because I'm going through this light moon, <laughs> the light color of the moon, something like that. Now we can see it. So now that I've got that, I wanna put a roof. This is gonna be the main section of the house. I'm gonna come up here just a little bit and do a horizontal line until I'm almost as far out as that and then connect these two with a weird curved line. And then I'm gonna come up here just a smudge and connect this down to here with an angled line. And then I'm going to make a real big peak coming up here, but I don't want it to go straight up from the center. So if you do go straight up from the center of this section and then almost to the top of your moon, hook it to the left a little bit, maybe about a half of an inch to an inch, give yourself a little bit of a marker. And then I can take this and this will, cause it's now off center, and I'll take it down like this and bring it out to that corner. And then from here, bring it out to this corner here. Again, let me use my pencil so you can see it in this darker or the lighter area, something like that. And then you can make any other little shapes off of it you want. So I'm gonna have just a little kind of shape in through here, a little triangular shape, a little shape here a little shape here. These are little triangles. And then I'm gonna have another little triangle and square. That's all I'm gonna do for my outline. I'm gonna take my, you could make any adjustments if you want, but now I'm just gonna take my medium brush, black paint, and I'm gonna color in this whole thing with black paint. The, oops, that just went a little awry. The only uh, time that I'm gonna kind of leave maybe a little bit of evidence of a line, I think is, where the roofs meet the um, the actual, well, actually, I kind of don't even really need to do that. I'm not, I'm not leaving any lines. <laughs> we're, just, we're just painting it all in black. And then I'm gonna guide you through when we go to do um, the, the information on the, on the house, because I, where I made these kind of rectangles, that was just to guide you through the drawing process to get the shape, the exterior shape. But when we go to paint the house, the um, the sections of the house are gonna kind of lay differently than these shapes that I just um, guided you through drawing. So sometimes I'll guide, or most of the time, I guide you through the actual shape of, um, 
of a particular section of an object, but in this case, I just kind of guided you through what was going to be the exterior shape, and I did that through um, through finding just large basic shapes within that exterior. Shape. I don't know if I'm explaining that right. It makes sense in my head, but um, the the lines that I gave you for like the rooftops and stuff, those are actually going to be. Um, because it's a haunted house, it's going to have take on a little bit different of a, um, a sectioning when it comes to those areas. So again, I'm just kind of going right to my um, my chalk mark. I did uh, just put a tiny bit of water on my brush in order to uh, get my brush to kind of um, have the paint sink into the little crevices of my canvas, especially in these smaller kind of pointier areas. You could take out your smaller brush um, to get close to these edges if you feel that um, this brush is too large for, like I'm gonna do, well, let me do this right hand side first. Um, I'm just gonna come down here like this, and then I have this little pointy thing coming out. If you felt that you needed or wanted that smaller brush to do that, you could certainly. You could certainly whip out that small brush, but for me, I am just adding a little bit of water to my brush, and that allows me to keep a pointy um, brush. The, the tip of my brush stays nice and pointy, and I can get it into those little crevices. But again, this is a haunted, spooky house that has um, an unusual shape to it, so if yours gets out of shape and, and creates its own special uniqueness, then that's great. Like that just made its own little fun shape and I'm just gonna roll with it because that's gonna make it my house or my, my rendition. And I'm trying to make these lines kind of wobbly on purpose, again, so I can have a fun uniqueness to um, this spooky house. I just brought out that tip a little bit further too. I don't know if that was intentional or not intentional, but it happens, so we're just gonna roll with it. Um, another little point out right in through here, and then I've got this fun little shape right in through here. You could make anything you want. If you wanted there to be like a little um, cat's walk or a little anything coming out the, the, um, the edges, feel free to do so, but if you want it to be a nice spooky kind of fun house, just make it tilt and stuff. <laughs> and then we're going to be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this medium brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint some trees and some bats. I'm using my small number two round brush. You could certainly use any small to medium detail brush that is comfortable to you. The color I'm going to be using is black. And if I, oh, I'm going to use um, probably maybe black and my dark blue as well, because I'm going to um, have a little tree down here that's going to have some dimension to it. So I think I'll use my dark blue for that as well. So I'm going to start with my trees and then we'll move into our, um, our bats. So again, I'm just using black and I'm using it with a little bit of water in it so it spreads nice and um, evenly on my canvas. I'm gonna start with some big branches up top and these are gonna be kind of spooky branches. So I'm gonna just start them pretty wide as they're coming off the canvas. And then as I um, get them to go to the edge where I want them to be um, the end of the branch, I want, for me, whenever I'm thinking of like spooky branches, I think that they have lots of bumps and turns and stuff in them and they will get nice and skinny at the edges. So they start thicker where they're gonna um, be more towards the tree trunk and then they get really kind of um, narrow at the tip. But for me, again, I like to have them kind of bending and have like little broken pieces coming off of them. And to me, that makes them look spooky. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not, but um, my next one I'm gonna have in through here. I'm not gonna have a lot of these um, branches coming in the foreground, just a couple, just again, to set the, set the atmosphere and the, and the mood. Uh, I'm gonna cross this one over into my moon a little bit. Um, and again, another thing for me with branches is trying to keep them inconsistent from one another. So 
um, as I'm doing them, I'm trying not to make one look exactly like the other one because to me that, that makes them look a little unnatural. I'm picking up some of my dark blue right now with my black because I feel like I want maybe a couple of these to look like they're a little bit further away and by adding just a little bit of that um, dark blue into it, it can kind of give me these layers of um, branches in through here. So that looks pretty good on this side. I'm going to go over to the other side and give myself um, a big branch. I'm going to say maybe somewhere in through uh, here and again thicker at the base and then as I kind of come up where I want it to um, end or kind of go in the um, the tip of it, <laughs> you know, sometimes you try and find words for things and they just don't, they just don't come out your mouth. So the tip of the branch, something like this, I'm going to make it skinnier. So I, again, put moisture on my brush, which is my water. And as I'm going towards that tip, I also let off on my pressure. So that's going to allow me to have that skinnier look to it. And of course, your branches don't have to be exactly as mine. That's going to be wh wherever your comfort zone is. And you could even put a couple in this top area if you want to just kind of squiggle in a couple of lines just to fill it in if you feel that um, you need space fillers of any kind. And then I'm also going to put um, I think I want one coming kind of down in through here too. I'm also going to put a little tree in my landscape so that way um, it it pushes that landscape back further. So I'm going to put one down in through here and I'm going to put it, I think I want it to write about in through here and then it's going to just kind of wiggle out towards that um, moon and of course you can make yours as fun as you want. I'm just doing these real little tiny um, branches allowing for it to kind of make its way into the sky and so you can see those edges of it. And when I go to do my bats I'm going to be doing a very similar um, technique just kind of allowing for myself to have these um, I'm going to pick up some of that dark blue now too to get some of these branches to just look a little bit um, thinner and kind of off in that distance a little bit more. You can make yours as full as you want as um, maybe maybe you want yours to still have kind of autumn leaves on it but right now I'm just kind of putting some real tiny little branches in through here and allowing for it to look like it's a pretty cool tree. If you want it to be lit up by the moon, I just put a, uh, picked up a little bit of white, which I didn't say I was going to be doing. So I put a little bit of white on my brush just to kind of give it a little bit of dimensional element, probably not necessary, but you know, I was feeling it. So I did it. So that looks pretty cool. And I don't necessarily want this to look like it's floating over here. So if you feel that you need to ground it a little bit more, you can pick up a little bit more black and just kind of put you know, more information on that hill or on that area just to get it to set in. So that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go ahead and do some bats. So my bats, I kind of have a go-to generic bat that I do. <laughs> you might find that you have different ones, but I'm going to have some really big ones and some really small ones. But in my head, I always see a bat in a, in, in a similar way. So I'm going to um, do my my first one so you can kind of see where where my head goes to but I'm, I'm gonna have this one kind of cross over my moon here so I typically have like my my body I have a couple of little of the um, ears that stick out and then I have um, like the wings that kind of come up like this and then they drop down like this and then I have these little kind of um, curved lines underneath. I don't know if they, oops, I'm, I'm making, hold on, I'm getting paint all over my paint, all over my painting. My hand has paint on it, wet black paint. So before I make too much of a mess, I just put a little water on my brush and we're gonna get those to go away. <laughs> Ooh, we're not gonna get them to go away all the way. Hold on one second. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to stop and fix something before you, before you go on to the next thing, otherwise, 
you could potentially, you know, have more work ahead of you later. There we go, that works. Um, so that's my bat. I'm gonna put a little bit more black on my brush. Make sure my hand is dry. <laughs> and that's kind of my basic go-to bat. You could certainly make yours um, in different positions. As, as I go through my um, bat making process, I will put them in different positions. You don't even necessarily need the head on there. You might not see the body on there. You know, it's all gonna depend on what size, you know, how big you want that bat to be. You could make a lot of little tiny bats too. So, and the tiny bats could just look like birds. So I could sit here and just make these little kind of generic bird marks and then maybe pull down some of the points to those, um, to the to the wings. You could make a bat look like it's kind of in a flying position, um, not stuck on like that, but maybe maybe it's kind of um, the pointy parts of the wings are kind of like this, and then we see you know the underside of it like this. I mean, you could you could really end the body here. You could really just have fun with kind of um, those those points of the bat wings depending on what, what direction that bat is flying in, it might make it look a little bit different. So as you're going through this, know that you don't have to make just one style or one direction of the bat. So maybe I do um, this one, maybe this one's just a tiny one in through here. I've got my little head and then I can just kind of, and the tinier they are, the less detail that you have. Maybe this one doesn't show the, um, the actual, uh, I don't know what they're called, like the uh, like the joint points above um, above it, but maybe it does. <laughs> so you can certainly, you know, I'm gonna have a big one in through here, so maybe this one is another kind of one where we see, um, we're gonna have this one pretty big, like this and like this. So maybe this one's gonna be like that one, only in reverse, and again, Yours don't have to be exactly as mine. You might have your own go-to bat that you like to make that is much different than mine. Um, but, you know, that's that's what we do as artists. We we find the, the things that are comfortable to us. We find a style that is comfortable to us. And then you make, you know, adjustments on, ver on it as you go along. So like when I'm painting trees, I have certain certain trees that really come naturally to me and I love to paint them. Um, so I paint them a lot, but I always do different variations of them. So that's one of those things that as you go through your learning process and your painting process, you'll find that certain things just come naturally to you and you can tweak them and stuff. But w when I'm doing something like this, maybe I just have a couple of real um, in your face kind of bats that are Tate, you know, that are more the stars of the show. And then maybe I just have some, as I, as I go through this, maybe I, I can make some more whimsical ones. Like maybe this one over here, I'm just seeing maybe the, the side of it. Maybe this is, um, maybe we see the, the underside of the wing like that, like that. So just give the impression that we're, that we've got the bat in that, in that direction and I've got lots of little tiny bats. So the little tiny bats are just gonna be off in the distance looking kind of like just distant birds, um, just typical generic kind of birds. But again, as you're going through your process, maybe, maybe you don't wanna have all these little tiny birds that are kind of flocking around. Um, I just thought that for me, when I'm doing stuff like this, if I wanna give a pretty good dimensional element to it, providing the these varying size objects the same object but in varying sizes really helps to push and pull that those dimensional elements so again these little tiny ones that I'm doing I'm not I'm not really that concerned if they're perfect if I have enough of them I'm just looking to kind of fill in the space and um, give the impression that there's lots of bats that are kind of taking taking flight in this um, in this area. Maybe maybe I've got another one kind of um, in through here. Maybe this one's got a little bit more information to it. And again, I, you can make a pointy body. You can make 
um, pointy wings. You can, again, use it in whatever way represents bats to you. I feel like I want quite a few more in through here. Um, so I'm going to just make a whole bunch of little tiny um, bird shapes, just that uh, almost like check marks or um, long lazy M type of um, shapes. You can put itty bitty ones down and through here. And then if I do feel that um, there's any ones that I want to kind of um, emulate more of the iconic bat shape, I can just kind of go through and say, oh, okay, well maybe this one I'll put the little um, points on it and maybe pull some of those iconic little bumps down on the bottom half of the um, of the wings or you know put little ears on it or something that will give the impression of a bat and I th I'm thinking that that's enough bats for me <laughs> um, you can certainly uh, fiddle with yours as much as you want I am going to be using this same small brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can wash and dry the small brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the first layer of the windows. I'm gonna use my small detail brush. The colors I'm gonna use are white, yellow, and red. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be putting a base coat of white on. And by the time I go from the top to the bottom, the top one will have dried and then we'll come back and put some, some brightness in it and we'll start the glow around the window as well. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of white paint on my brush, and I'm gonna guide you through where my windows are gonna be, but you could certainly put yours anywhere else that you would like. So I'm gonna have a little um, section where I have this line in through here. I have a window um, kind of set in through here, so I'm just gonna give myself a little square section. You do not need to have these perfect. You can even soften up those edges so I'm just gonna kind of soften up the edges so it's not a clean section. Um, that'll just make my painting process more believable <laughs> and it'll allow for that glowy stuff on the outside to happen as well. So that's gonna be my first one. I'm gonna have a little window where I have this kind of um, piece sticking out here. That's gonna be another kind of piece of molding. So I'm gonna have another little window on this side of the house. So I just kind of put it on there with a really thin layer of white paint and then just kind of soften those edges. So again, it's not a really firm line or a really firm section, just kind of muted and out of focus. I'm gonna have another little one right in through here. So again, just finding my little spot, putting that white on and then softening around those edges. I'm gonna have a pretty big one right in in here so this one's going to be crossing over into the um so if the roof is here i'm having it down a little bit into the right this is going to be this front section is going to look like it is um a section that is on top of the other roof of the bottom section of the house so something like this is going to be my section and again i want these to be uneven looking i want them to be um, you know, soft edges. I don't need them to be of a perfect anything. I don't want them to be perfect because <laughs> that'll, that'll take away from my spookiness. So again, just kind of softening those edges as I put it on. I'm going to pick up some more white. I'm going to have one right over on this side and through here. So again, just adding it, making sure I don't have too much paint on my brush and then just softening those edges something like that. I've got another one in through here. So this is gonna be um, in the front of the house. So this one, all the next three that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have a window here, a window here, and a door here. These are all gonna kind of, the, the door is gonna be a little bit higher than the two um, windows, but they all kind of fall towards the top or below this line in through here. So just to give you a little point of reference as to where I'm putting them, and again, the two windows on the sides of the door are not the same as one another. This is just, again, really fun, uneven, gonna probably fall off this hill at some point type of a house. 
the house that you don't ever want to bump into um, in your travels <laughs> in the woods on Halloween night. So something like that. And then again, just wiping my brush off and softening these edges. This is gonna be the bottom of the door somewhere, something like this. And then I have one more right in through here. Oh, I probably should have a little bit more white paint on my brush so I can have that center nice and bright. And I can already tell that first window that I started up at the top of the house is dry. So I'll be able to go back to it right now and add my glow that I want to. So I've got this coming on in through here. That looks great to me. So now I'm gonna go back up to this window. Well, I see a thick spot right here that might take a little long to dry, so I just thinned that out. I'm just thinning out any really thick spots so they dry by the time I get to them. So this tops top one up and through here. So the color combination that I'm gonna to use to brighten up these windows is yellow and red. So I'm gonna start with yellow paint. So I have yellow on my brush and I'm gonna put a little area of yellow and then I can pick up just a dot of red and this is gonna give on my dirty brush and this will give me this orangey kind of glow around, the, um, around that window. So you can make it as vibrant or as subtle as you want. We will have a future step that'll kind of um, intensify this a little bit with putting window panes and stuff on, but um, if you feel that you want it any more on a particular window, you can pick up a little bit of yellow, red, and white, and you can soften those edges or do whatever else you feel is necessary at this point. But again, we'll have another step that will that will take care of those little details. So I just wipe my brush off. I'm picking up a little bit more yellow, and this is how I'm gonna approach each window. So I'm gonna put that yellow on. You can even cover the whole window with yellow, it's fine. And then wipe my brush off, pick up a little bit of red, and get that red to create like an orange glow hue in that window. So something like that. And I just repeat that step. So I'm gonna wipe my brush off, pick up some yellow. Or maybe I can do that to multiple windows while I've got the yellow on my brush. So I'm just going in with some yellow on all of the windows so it can get them all. Uh, and just making sure that the, the window is dry too. So that the white underneath is dry. Uh, that one's pretty good, I think, right now. So again, putting the yellow on, and any little spots that might um, might have lifted up or if, you, if it wasn't dry all the way, that's okay because, again, we're gonna have window sill, like um, with the divider window panes and stuff like that, so that'll come too. So this is just yellow I'm starting with putting the yellow on. And if the yellow's still wet when you go into the red, that's okay. But it was that white underneath that I wanted a little bit dry. So now I'm gonna pick up um, yellow and red on my brush just to get these um, exterior kind of glows to happen. That looks pretty good. And if it goes too much too red on you, just pick up a little bit more yellow. That's totally fine, just whatever. Whatever is visually appealing to you, you might really like the red in it, you might really like the orange that's being created or the yellow, whatever, again, is visually appealing to you. That's the way you should always take your artwork <laughs> because that's the way that you're gonna enjoy it the most. And when you enjoy it, the viewer enjoys it because that's where they, they, can, they can sense, they can sense the, the, uh, the energy in your painting if you enjoyed the process. So again, yellow and red are these glowy colors that I'm putting around the edges. If the red is too intense, I just pick up a little bit of yellow to uh, counteract it and I'm just kind of rubbing it into the house along the side. So yellow and red and getting these glows to happen in the windows. And then we're gonna be using this same small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the windows. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are brown, red, yellow, and white. And if I need or choose to go into any other colors, I'll let you know. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put any kind of um, window pane or um, 
door frame or anything like that that I want to have on each window. And I'm also going to make sure that I have as much glow around them as I want. So I want to add a little bit more glow around them so it almost is casting um, a brightness onto the siding of the house. So I'm going to start first with all my little crosses and um, darker marks within them to make it look like there's some window panes. So I'm going to start with some brown paint. And you can really have fun with however you want this to go. So for me, I'm going to keep mine simple because <laughs> that, that's the way it works out best for me. So I'm going to bring these um, marks in a just a simple formation. You could certainly use black if you wanted to, um, but I want mine to just kind of look like they're part of the window itself or that the glow of the window is... Um, is um, kind of making them not a super black color, but that'll be up to you. I'm actually going to be adding some additional um, red to these uh, to these um, window things. <laughs> window things. You know what? I don't want that one there. Hold on. I'm dried a little, or that one isn't the way I want it. I want two down here. One, two, and again totally not concerned about how perfect these are simply because they, they are in a spooky house and maybe these um, windows are broken. <laughs> you can add dark marks down the side, leaving a little bit of that glow around the edge. You can put it on the top, you can put it on the bottom. Again, have fun with it. Uh, this one here, I think I'm just going to have uh, maybe like that and again any any which way that you want is totally fine maybe this one just goes one across and you can see how I'm kind of leaving some of that glow around the edges just simply because it's um, I want this to just look like it's all glowing so in order to do that you've got to leave some of that glow around it so this door frame in through here I'm gonna put this mm, Let's put this right about in through here and then just kind of bring it down and you'll see in a minute I'm going to add to this glow as well and of course this is a door so I'm just going to let that stay open and then this one over here we're going to put this one sideways like that that looks pretty good so now I'm going to um, add some additional glow around the edges because again I just want to make sure that it works as glowy as I want. So I'm going to actually pre-mix a little bit of an orange color. Let me just wash my brush first because it has brown on it and that will make it a little bit greenish looking. So uh, yellow plus a touch of red is going to just give me an orange tone. That's all I'm looking for. I can be pretty um, steering a lot towards the red. And then once I've got that, I can add this wherever I want to. So if I, if I feel that the center calls for it or even over on the edges I can add a little bit um, along the edges I feel like I want more red than that that was a little too on the yellowy side so again steer it in whatever direction you want you can even add some onto the siding of the house um, I'm gonna just add a little bit more to this guy in through here and I'm adding it because I feel that I want more glow to it I don't necessarily um, want to be um, nervous about adding this glow because I think it adds a lot to to the composition so as you're doing yours if you want more glow put more glow that's good well, you know what what's gonna kind of add to the enchantedness of it um, in through here I definitely feel like I want a bunch on this guy in through here or on the side of the house so you can make it you know go left to right you can put it in the middle of that window whatever is going to work out for you do it and again just i'm using a little bit of both that orange and the red just because i feel some areas want a little bit more red than others and then again bring it wherever you want it to be brought i feel i can really get aggressive with it on the near this front door simply because it is um the front door <laughs> there's probably a lot of light on coming out of that front door so I'm going left to right so I can have almost maybe like the look of it uh, the, in the siding or something and then like this 
bring this a little bit more up and through here. And again, I'm switching back and forth between the red and that orange tone. That looks pretty good. And then I'm just gonna go uh, down those, uh, the braces, uh, the framework of the windows with a little bit of red on top of that brown, if you want to. This is, again, just kind of adding to the glow of it. Not necessary, but if you wanted that extra bit of glow, just add a tiny bit of red, almost um, illuminating those, oh, I, that brown was wet, so that's gonna get a little extra smear on it. Um, the red al around those brown marks is just gonna, again, add to the glowiness of it. And then once you've got that done, we are gonna use this same brush for the next step. Um, so, ooh, let me add a little bit on this door too. So once you've got yours done, you can um, wash and dry. Oh, and if you had, before I go away, if you had any areas that you felt needed to pop even more, like be a little bit brighter, you can use a little bit of white and yellow. I just washed and dried my brush. I'm putting a tiny bit of white and yellow on my brush. So let's say you wanted an extra little light on in this, in, in the center up here. You could certainly just say, okay, let's put that extra bit of white and yellow up and through there and that's going to make that one spot glow even more or in the door if you want that the viewer's attention to be drawn right to those particular windows you can certainly add that little extra bit of pop into those windows and then you can just once you're all set if you can ever stop we are going to use the same brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the house. I'm using my small number two round. The colors that I'm gonna use are black, dark blue, and white, and maybe some brown as well. What I'm gonna be doing is, I'm in essence gonna be kind of outlining the some of the edges of the house in order to explain to the viewer where the edges are. And we're gonna be putting a little um, some stairs coming off the front, but I'm going to have a little porch kind of area as well. I'm, I'm going to add the, the porch so it looks even more like it's falling off the hill. <laughs> so we're going to first um, use some, some, what are we going to do first? I'm going to use my uh, dark blue first in order to kind of section out or give you the idea of where these particular sections of the building are. So for instance, if I want to take this roof in through here, this top part, I want to kind of explain to the viewer what's the front part and what's the side part. So what I can do is go above this window a little bit and I've got my piece that's jutting out in through here and I can take this and just give myself a little bit of a line right in through there. Then I can take from here and I'm gonna connect it to over here and I'm gonna leave it a little bit above the, um, the bottom edge, so this way it, it looks like um, there's a little shadow underneath it, so something like that. And remember, oh, and I brought it kind of almost up to the window too. Remember that this is a uneven house, so unevenness is acceptable. So I can take this corner now and connect it up to the top of my, of my peak. So I'm just gonna go kind of down the center of that peak bring it in a little curved line and meet right in through here. I just created the front and the side of it. So this left side, I'm just gonna take my um, dark blue and just kind of lightly streak it down here just to give myself a little bit of color, but not to um, overpower it. I can also put a little peak on top of this window. So I can take this and just give myself a triangular type of shape like that. I could even bring it across and just give myself a little bit of information in through there. That works out for me. Then I can take this light blue or uh, dark blue. I could even put a little information on this guy back in through here. And this is what I'm going to do for this for this first kind of pass to it. So on this next section, I can take from this window, just go a little bit to the right of it and just give myself kind of a diagonal line like that and then shoot it across to get to this peak 
in through here. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna take from this corner here and just connect it to that corner. And now I've <clears throat> told the viewer what the front is versus the side. And then this section in through here, maybe I give this, um, this window a little, maybe a curved top to it like this. And you can consider this to be molding or an overhang or whatever you want. Um, this side of the building in through here is going to kind of just land in the roof uh, line. So I'm just going to kind of, I'm going to put a little water on my brush because I don't necessarily need this to be super bright on this side. Just kind of giving myself the edge of that in through there. Um, this guy in through here, I think I'm going to put, just let him sit on the other side of the roof. So I'm just going to kind of give myself just a little um, edge to the top of that roof in through there. And then this front edge, that's going to be a pretty important one because I want to have a, a porch. So I'm going to take from, <clears throat> I'm going to take the bottom of this window, like something like this, and then I'm going to bring this off in a diagonal way, like in through here. This will be kind of the side roof of here. I'm going to close it off like this and then bring it across to this edge in through here. So I'm just giving you the front edge like of um, that particular roof. And then this guy in through here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take from here and give myself a diagonal line to about here. And then I can meet this to this corner in through here. So now I have kind of two sections of, um, maybe this can go out a little bit further. So this looks a little diagonal. Yeah, that looks good. <laughs> something like that. There we go. And then I'm going to have um, over here, I want to give just a little bit of a molding from here to here. So now I've sectioned off, um, like this will be kind of a porch, this section enter here, this will be the side of the house. Oh, I want to put a little line down this side too. So we see the front side versus the side side. <laughs> so I'm going to take this and just give myself a fun kind of diagonal curved line to meet like that. So that gives me my sectioning for the house. Now I've got to say, okay, well, where's going to be my porch? So I want to have a porch in through here. So I washed my brush. I'm going to put some black paint on it with a little bit of water. And I'm going to say, okay, I've got my, uh, my door is in through here. I've got a window here. So my porch can definitely come out to here and it's got to land somewhere. The pole for it has to land somewhere in the land in order for it to not look like it's falling too far over. So you can make this pole look whatever way you want it to look. So I'm just going to kind of bring it in a fun way down to my land like this. While I'm here, I also see that the side of my house needs a little cleaning up. So I'm just going to take my black paint because I can see my chalk. So I'm just going to get rid of that in through there. Um, I do want to have so if this is the, the front corner of the, the house, I can just give myself, um, I'm going to go up a little bit where that window is and just give myself a horizontal line. This is going to be the front edge of my porch. I'm going to give myself a couple of pillars. So I'm actually going to pick up my uh, blue so you can see this, my dark blue. I'm going to come between these two um, windows and give myself a vertical line that's going to come down a little bit past this horizontal line that I just did. So this will be the poles that are holding up my porch. <laughs> and then I think I need one on this corner in through here, um, which I'll do with black. So you can see it a little bit to the left of the door. So something like this. I'm just giving you colors so you guys can see them right now. And then maybe there's a, a pole in the corner too, where it kind of meets back in through here. So that gives me my poles to my to my porch. I can also put on um, some railings. So I can take this if I need somebody to um, walk down. <laughs> I can take, I've got black on my brush right now. I'm going to give myself this kind of fun curved line. I'm put, picking up blue so you can see it in through here. Um, fun curved line that's going to be the top railing to my um, to my stairs. I'm going to do that same thing over here with my black and blue on my brush so you can see it. So again, this is just my, my railing 
for my stairs that's going to come down somewhere in here. I'm going to put uh, a front edge to my the bottom of my porch. So I'm just going to go brown and white. So right now I'm just kind of building these little uh, this little information. The the that squiggly blue line will be in front of the brown one that I just did in a minute. But this is kind of the front look to my porch so we can see it. I'm going to put some posts in through here so you can see those. I probably should have done this before the 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 hand railing to walk down the steps. But so this is just brown and white so you can see it in through there. I'm going to do the same thing over here, brown and white. These are this is the um, rail system <laughs> holding up this porch, which does not look very sturdy, but you know, that's what it's all about. <laughs> so this is just brown and white. I decided to make those colors a little bit different so we can see them. And this is gonna go right in through here. So I need some stairs too. I'm gonna put the stairs on. So I'm gonna use the brown and white because it seems to be pretty um, visible here. So I need um, something here and I'm just gonna kind of come down like this. I'm going to um, add some more glow to this in a minute. I just picked up some black and with my color combination on my brush so it allows me to see those steps a little bit better. There we go. And then I'm going to, um, I feel like I want a little bit more brown and white over here just to kind of give myself a little edge to the building. I'll put a little bit more edge to the building elsewhere too, but I just needed to do that because it was on my brain. A little edge here too. So now I want to just finish up these, um, the railing. So I'm going to bring this down. Uh, it's going to come down like this and then vertical in front of those steps. So I'm just really makeshifting this just so we can see that there's something. You definitely don't have to even put the um this whole rail system but for me when i'm doing stuff like this even when i'm just trying to have fun and um and give it a nice a you know playful kind of feel to it i still want to have some of those elements captured so it you know it feeds my myself um that looks pretty good to me i just want to go and finish clean up some of this stuff so i'm going to pick up a little bit of black and brown I feel like I need a little edge to this window in through here. So just fixing that in through there. I'm going to put a little bit more blue on my roof in through here. So just a little bit more blue so we can see the roof edge a little bit. And you could certainly pick up brown if you wanted to add that little bit of siding or make sure you have the edge to the roof. I'm not quite sure this is fully the way that I want it to look. So I'm going to just pick up a little bit of black and just kind of disguise this a little bit. <laughs> if all else fails, just make it go into the dark and then then nobody will notice if you did something that wasn't um, that didn't make sense. I'm picking up some more black right now to just underline this roof in through here so you can see it better in front of the door. And then I'm just going to fiddle right now. So I feel like in through here I've got a pretty good amount of information but if you want to add stuff like like I just picked up some brown and black you could certainly add any little you know if you wanted a little bump out or like a little sign or something you can certainly or a little place for the um, for the birds to land you can really have fun with just kind of um, putting in place any little additional elements that will advance your story or put any more information in that makes you happy. Um, but I'm thinking that I'm pretty satisfied with this. I might um, just kind of step back from it for a minute. And if there's any additional, like right now I'm, I'm picking up my blue and white just to kind of emphasize the little edges of some of these um, details. I'll step back, um, look at it from a distance. And if there's anything additional that I want to do, like maybe up and through here, I put a little bit of brown on my brush just to put a little bit of siding in through there or whatever you feel would work for you. And then we're going to use, um, I think I actually want to use my medium round for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this small brush away, take out your medium round and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish 
the ground of this front hill. I'm using my medium brush. The colors I'm gonna use are black, dark blue, brown, and white. If I go into any of the colors, I'll let you know. So what I'm first gonna do is I'm gonna pick up some of my dark blue color and I'm going to kind of create a little bit of a path coming off of the bottom of the steps that is being illuminated by my moon. So I'm just gonna kind of take my blue, here's the bottom of my steps, and I can create this really organic, illuminated kind of area that's coming down to the, you can make it go down to the bottom of the canvas or not, totally up to you. I'm just kind of allowing for it to blend into the landscape. Just wanted it to get a little bit of um, illuminated value from the, from the moon. I can also put a couple of rocks in place. So if you wanna add anything to this hill, you could certainly just kind of give yourself these um, curved type of shapes, big, small, whatever you want. This will give you kind of like a ledge type of look like it's up on a, you know, like there's rocks. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's stone, it's rocks, it's grass, and then just kind of allow them to to blend out. I'll get I'll show you how to uh, highlight them in a minute, but I want to get this on and then um, go and do some other stuff while this is drying. So firm kind of line at the top of the rock, and then allow it to blend down into the hillside. While that's kind of drying, I'm going to take um, put a little bit of water on my brush and pick up some black paint. So water and a little bit of black paint. And you could do this next uh, step with a smaller brush if you wanted to, but this is where I'm gonna take and I'm gonna say, oh, I feel like I want a, a little branch coming out behind my, um, my house or a little kind of dead bush or something. You can make additional pieces of wild grass if you wanted to. You can just kind of pull your brush up and give yourself the appearance of um, longer pieces of grass other than what we had initially done um, with that silhouette. So if you felt again that you wanted, that you wanted or needed some space fillers um, or you wanted to add to the story of your um, of the surroundings, you can certainly add these little guys. Like I feel I want to add some in through here. And again, this is going to be all just a preference on your part if you even want to add this stuff or not. Maybe you love your hill the way that it is. It Maybe you feel that it needs a little bit, a little extra something, something. And this is how you could go about adding those um, those extra little details. So once I've got that on, and if you felt that you needed to hide anything at the bottom of your house, you could certainly add additional pieces of grass or anything like that down at the bottom of the house. So I've, now that I've got that in place, I feel like that's all I wanna do for the black silhouetted stuff. Well, maybe maybe add a little bit down here. It looks a little, little unnatural. So we're gonna, maybe we'll just add another fun one coming in through here with some additional kind of pieces of grass. So now that I've got that, I'm going to finish my light areas on here and then we'll, um, we'll put some silhouetted pieces of grass coming on the other side of it too. So washing and drying my brush. If I want this to look a little bit more textured, now I'm gonna pick up, I can pick up white with a touch of brown. So just a little bit on my brush and this is gonna give me a little bit additional um, texture. Maybe there's little pebbles, maybe there's, you know, whatever you imagine it to be. I just picked up a little, and you can pick up a little bit more of your um, brown or your dark blue, whatever you want, just to give that little additional texture so it's just not a flat color. And I just picked up a little bit more white. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the rocks. So if I want there to be a little extra brightness on the top side of those rocks, letting them um, look like they're being illuminated from the moon, I can certainly just add a little extra brightness on the top of them. You don't have to do it on all of them. I think it will look more natural if you kind of um, just pick a couple of them to, to put a little highlight on. Um, you can make them even 
smaller if you want to have like a little pebble or something that just kind of uh, takes the on that extra that extra glow from um from the moon so once i've got that now i can just finish up my little silhouette um pieces so i'm going to wash and dry my brush and i'm going to pick up some some more black so picking up black plus a little bit of water on my brush and i can take and give these little silhouette pieces in front of my walkway. So this is what's gonna add that additional piece of dimensional element. So you've got kind of your walkway, then you've got your um, grassy pieces on that side of the walkway, and then you've got your grassy pieces on this side of the walkway that can just overlap it, and that'll give it that extra bit of dimension. You could even um, pick up a little bit of white uh, with your light blue or your dark blue white and dark blue and give yourself you know the little highlights to them if you wanted to that's again one of those things that'll be up to you if you want to add those little final details and i'm thinking that that's looking pretty good so i'm gonna call it um you can certainly make more or less of course i'm gonna I know sit here and fiddle, but I'm thinking that that's pretty good. Um, so once you've got this done, if you can stop, we're going to be using that small brush for the next step. So you can just put this one away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I'm gonna be using my small detail round, my number two. I usually sign mine in the lower left or the lower right. I think I'm going lower right on this one with black paint. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you of course could sign yours with your first name. You could sign it with the date. You could sign it anywhere in the painting you want. If you wanted to sign it in the house and the window, you could do whatever you want. This is one of those things that is totally up to you how you want to identify your painting and you get to make those kind of decisions. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a really cool Halloween inspired spooky <laughs> house and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.